Amanda Burke. Are there things about your life in Scientology and the Sea Org that you miss? Are there things that you missed out while being in the Sea Org? What are those and have you created a bucket list to accomplish those things? Okay, so are there things in the Sea Org or Scientology that I miss? I miss uh, a couple things. I miss one, I miss a lot of my friends that I had uh, when I was in. They were really great people and I'm uh, to this day sad that I have not been able to reconnect with uh, a lot of them because they're still in and might still be in for the rest of their lives and that's kind of sad to me. Um, and the other thing that I miss, honestly, uh, on a personal level is the, the surety, the certainty that I knew everything there was important to know about life and how, and death, you know, and what was going to happen after death and that I was going to keep living, that there was no death, right? Uh, and, the, and the surety of, of being able to deal with people in my environment from a position of authority that I knew how to help them. I knew what was going on with them in their head. I could peer into their into their psyche, you know, and sort of see what was going on. And I don't mean telepathy. I just mean I, you know, had all this information from Hubbard about why and how people operate and why they do what they do between the, the, the tone scale and the reactive mind and evil intentions and all the various things in Scientology that explain human behavior. I thought I had it really taped. And I thought I, you know, it was all, it was a very small list of things uh, that, that caused people to do what they do. And, um, and to be absolutely sure that I was right about all of those things, right? And so now that I'm out and I'm, you know, exposed to the real world and all the complications and, and uh, nonsense and tomfoolery that goes on, um, and seeing, you know, and having, been, having all that surety stripped away because Hubbard was a con man and a liar and very little of what he said was original to him, and, uh, you know, and, and he just, he, you know, and all that certainty and, you know, we know what the problem is. I mean, all that's gone. So now all the complications of trying to explain and understand why people do what they do and, and how people do it and all that. I mean, that's now it's just, a, you know, tons of question marks and tons of new things to figure out and, and, uh, and much more involved and complicated uh, you know, questions and answers, uh, you know, because we get into sociology, psychology, neurology, uh, like, like all these things as, you know, as to like, why do people do what they do? So, so I miss that, you know, because it was, it made life a lot simpler. Life was very easy as a Scientologist and as a Sea Org member, uh, very uncomplicated. And I think that now that I sit here talking about this, I think that's one of the draws to destructive cult thinking is, or maybe not even destructive cult thinking, but just that, that level of simplistic thinking, the one size fits all, I understand what it is that makes people tick kind of thing, um, you know, that, that's rampant throughout pseudoscience and, and uh, you know, all these woo kind of things that people get involved in. They're looking for simple answers, and the and the unfortunate truth is that there aren't a lot of simple answers. So, so I miss that. Um, as to things that I missed or didn't, you know, put on my bucket list or whatever when I was in Scientology that now I can accomplish that that I am now doing right. Um, oh yeah, all kinds of things. I had a long list, and I mean I had a list of movies to see and TV shows to catch up on. Um, it was, I, I, it was long and I have caught up on all of it. I actually, I think, um, I haven't watched all the episodes of South Park. I think I watched through like season eight or something before I was like, okay, I think I, I think I got South Park. So I haven't watched the rest of it. Um, but I've caught up on all the movies, all the TV shows and stuff though, over all those years that I missed out on. Um, read some books. I have, you know, I have a whole two, three shelves of books. Um, you know, people send me reading recommendations all the time. I'm like, yeah, add it to the list. Uh, I got a lot to read and catch up on. But um, I did manage to get a little bit of travel in before I left the Sea Org. I traveled around in the Western United States and I had boots on the ground in every single state west of the Mississippi, which was really cool, except Alaska. Um, so that I managed to accomplish while I was in the Sea Org in the last years that I was in and actually helped me get my head 
out a little bit so I could get out of the Sea Org. Um, but I really would like to do some international travel. I really, really, really need to get to Australia and then uh, Europe uh, are my plans on that. And, um, and maybe maybe South America at some point. Um, so that is, uh, Africa's not on my list at all. <laughs> just, just to make that clear. Southeast Asia, Africa, Antarctica, no, not on the list. Um, anyway, so I'd like to do some travel. I think that would be really, really great, but that's, you know, future sort of thing, not anything immediate. Um, and, you know, and, and, and all the things I'm doing now are pretty much the, the, the dreams that I had when I was still in, working for myself, being creative, being able to write, being able to talk to you folks and, and helpful and, you know, be of a, a helpful influence in some fashion through education and, and information and hopefully entertaining at the same time. <laughs> and, um, and just living independently, you know, I look around at my place here and I, and I, this is my place and, and everything here I've put here and, uh, living with, you know, the woman that I love and, and being able to mutually create a life together. Those were things I really wanted when I was in the Sea Org. I mean, I was married when I was in the Sea Org, but we had a room and it wasn't ever, you, you're constantly reminded when you're in the Sea Org that the things you own are not yours and the spaces you're occupying are not yours. And the life you're living is really just one of sacrifice and martyrdom to the cause. You are constantly being reminded of this. So, uh, so you know, you would dream, I would dream while I was in of, of not having a life like that. Um, I would, I would, I would sacrifice, I would make the sacrifices that I made um, you know, I, I did those things. I can't say, uh, you know, somebody held a gun to my head, but I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't something that I did because I thought it was fun. I thought it was necessary for the mission that I was on to save the world. So now that I'm not trying to save the world anymore, I'm just trying to get by and do what I can to help. Um, it's a whole different, whole different ball of wax, you know, it's a whole different ball game. So, I guess that's pretty much everything I, I can and should say at this point because I've probably rambled on a little bit much, but that's my answer to the question.